this is Artifacts of Mars. And, uh, you know, shift gears and do um, unauthorized Bible study series. Now, we're going to discuss the Tower of Babel story. This one's classic. And it, it shows a lack of critical thinking on part of preachers and the religious community. Now, so, first of all, let's read what it says. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shamar and they dwelt there. That's rather odd right there because first it says the whole earth was of one language and says that uh, these people went to the east, so there's a conflict there. Anyway, and they said to one mother, Go, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they have brick for stone and slime they have for mortar. And they said, Go, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered about abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and tower where the children of men builded, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they all have one language, and they have this they have begun to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down there, confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence on the face of the whole earth, and they left the off to build the city. Now, what are the problems here? Uh, why would these people, whoever they were, build a tower in the first place? See, this part makes no sense. Why? Because they had to have been intelligent enough to realize that you cannot possibly build something, not in that day and age at least, they couldn't possibly build something taller than uh, the local mountains. And they knew there was mountains. I'm going to bring up a map and we'll show you. This is the uh, supposed map where all this started. And this talks about how they traveled and they found this plane and they decided to build a tower there. Well, if you want to reach up to heaven, why don't you uh, just go, okay, we'll go climb that mountain and see how high we can get. You see, they had to have known they couldn't possibly climb, build a tower taller than a mountain. Even with our advanced technology, we haven't gotten anywhere near that. There is talk of uh, the space elevator. It's been talked for years. I think it's just going to remain talk. I think that monstrosity is... Never going to be built, but who knows? Anyway, so God came down, and there's a second problem. Why does God need a spaceship to come down to Earth? I didn't say it, the Bible says it. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. So, here you have this God, who's supposed to be up in heaven and all-knowing, 
Well, apparently he requires some kind of a craft that doesn't say. But it says he came down to see what they were doing. So, there you have a case where the Bible clearly states that God is not omniscient. So, what was the purpose of this tower? Well, I would have no idea other than if it wasn't for the uh, building materials they're talking about. I might be uh, tempted to say rocket gantry or uh, interdimensional travel perhaps. I personally prefer the rocket gantry idea actually because it says if God came down <laughs> that means he was in a spaceship. So let me give you a little scenario here. Perhaps uh, what this means is that if we had the mothership in orbit and God saw something going on that he didn't like, so he took a little ride in a shuttlecraft and took a look. And the rest they say is history. That could be. That's pure speculation, of course. I can't prove it. Because I can't prove that Babel actually existed. But, anyway. You know, this area is supposed to be in northern Syria, where they're having so many problems right now. And the area's kind of mountainous and stuff. It says they went to a plane to build the tower. You know, why would you do that? It just makes no sense when they could climb the mountains and get much higher than they could ever could with a tower. I mean, if we can't do it today, and these are supposed to be primitive tribes people, duh. So, let's look at uh, verse 7 here. Go, let us go down in their confused confound their language so that they may understand may not understand one another's speech. Again, we got this let us go down. Well, if you're up in heaven there is no down or up, technically. It shouldn't be. I mean we on this planet think of down as the direction we're being pulled by gravity, right? So, go, let us go down there, confound their language so they may not understand one another's speech. I heard some speculation which I found interesting about that. I'm not climbing on to it totally, but speculation is, or was, or whatever, that it's actually t people uh, were able to communicate telepathically before this whole episode and afterwards they couldn't communicate telepathically. Interesting speculation. Uh, that's about it. So what Let's try and put this all together. A bunch of people moved to a plane to build a tower which they supposedly think is going to reach up to heaven. God comes down to see what they are doing. Does that make any sense to you? It shouldn't. Unless what we're... Uh, calling the Lord here is actually a very highly advanced alien who uh, put these people that on the earth for a purpose. Let me give you a little scenario. Let's say I have a problem with stone slide 
slung, uh, stone and mortar, bricks and mortar. It probably won't work out very well for a rocket gantry, but, uh, let's say that we're building a rocket gantry and we're planning on going into orbit. That could be an issue if you got a big mothership up there and you find out your god is nothing more than an extremely advanced alien. You know, of course, God could also throw in a few thunder thunderbolts and destroy the thing. So if we're going to put this all together, I would say... There was something in Earth, Earth's orbit that somebody didn't want someone to see. These were these people were building some kind of an apparatus. Perhaps not quite as primitive as we've been led to believe. I don't know. The Tower of the Babel story. You can only take it at face value because. There's no way to prove these stories even happened. How the hell can I prove it? I can't. Do I know it actually happened? No, I don't. I'm just putting my speculation out as to what this means. But if God has to come down in a spaceship, then we got a serious problem. It doesn't actually say God, it says the Lord. That may be a technical difference. See, I believe there's a God of this universe, but that God is not the God of the Bible. So, interdimensional uh, platform, rocket gantry, there had to be a reason for it. It wasn't climbing up to heaven in the conventional sense. Is it just there's no way it could have gone more than a few hundred feet. They might have made they're really determined they might have made it up to a thousand feet before a bloody thing fell down. If we're talking about the primitive uh structure that this is talking about. They couldn't get any we we're near as high as a mountain. We can't do it today. So I have to assume that well, probably a spacecraft or something they're getting ready to launch or they had some kind of apparatus some way of reaching into orbit and whoever we're talking about didn't want to be seen. That would be my take on this. The whole Bible is a story of alien intervention. There's no question. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thanks for watching. I'll try to add another sometime.